Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give honor to the Lord? Can we stand to our feet as we begin to declare and decree that we serve an awesome God? We serve a magnificent God. Yes, Lord. I'm grateful and I praise his holy name. Don't have any praises out there this morning. I praise his holy name. For God, you've just been so wonderful. Yes, you have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Clap your hands with me. Come on, if you truly love to praise the name of the Lord, clap your hands with me. Come on, we're going to declare and decree that he's a good, good God. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. I love to praise him. I love to praise him. Praise him. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Hey, he's my rock, he's my rock, my rock, my sword and shield. He's a will, he's a will in the middle of a will. I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I love to praise, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, I love, I love to praise his name, oh, I love to praise his holy name, I love to praise him, yeah, I love to praise him, My rock, my rock, my sword. He's a wheel in the middle of the wheel. Yeah, I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise this. Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Hey, Hallelujah, I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise his holy name. Hey, he's my rock, my rock for sword. He's a will, yes he is. I know he'll never, never let me down. He's just a jewel, yeah, that I have found him. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He's holy, hallelujah, he's holy, hallelujah, he's holy, hallelujah, he's holy, hallelujah, hey, he's righteous, hallelujah, he's righteous, hallelujah, he's righteous, hallelujah. He's righteous, hallelujah. Hey, I love to praise his name. I love to praise his name. Yeah, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hey, he's holy, 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 he's righteous, he's righteous, he's righteous, he's righteous, 
He's righteous. He's righteous. Yeah. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 My ruler, I call him my deliverer. I call him holy, 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 hey, I love to pray. I love to praise him. 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 I love to praise his name. Oh, I love to praise. 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 I love. Yeah. yeah, praise him then, praise him. He's worthy, he's worthy. Yeah, our scripture reading this morning is coming out of the book of Romans, uh, the fifth chapter, starting at verse one, says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith unto his grace wherein we stand and rejoicing in the hope of glory. Not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience and work is patience and patience, experience and experience hope and hope make it not a shame because the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So we can rejoice on the inner circumstances in anything. Because God says rejoice in tribulation. Tribulation and patience. He's working something in you. Praise the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of our Savior, in the name of our Redeemer, in the name of our Jehovah Jireh, hallelujah. He is the bright and morning star. He is the lily of the valley. He is our help, Father God, in a midnight hour, in the midnight hour, you are there. No matter where we go, you watch over your children. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Oh, Father God, we just can't stop praising you because you inhibit the praises of your people. We will praise you at all times. Oh, we bless the Lord on today. Bless us to bless you on today, Lord. Bless us to give you our utmost for your highest on today, Lord. Bless us, Father God, to look to you because you and you alone are worthy. Oh, we lift you up, Father God. Thank you, Father God, because we know that the joy of the Lord, hallelujah, is our strength. Strength like no other. We thank you, Father God. Right in the midst of the grocery store, right in rush hour traffic, when the job is getting ready to shut down, when our enemies come up against us, you abide faithful. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we want to get closer. Closer to you, Lord. Closer to you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for bearing our infirmities. 
We thank you, Father God, that wherever the pain is, you are right there. And you give us strength like no other. Oh, Father God, bless the people of God on tonight. Bless the people of God today, Lord, for pressing through. Bless those on live stream, Father God. We need you today, Lord. Our bodies are weak and we will fail if you don't send the latter rain. Bless us on today, Father God. You are our all in all. Bless this service, Lord. We thank you for Pastor Lucian, Lord. We thank you for this man of God who was brought up in the church, Father God. And we know that you have plans for him. And we ask you to bless him, Father God, and keep him, Father God. Continue to bless our bishop and continue to bless our leaders and every person in their respective places. Bless us on today, Lord. We give you the glory. And we don't have to wait because we know that it's already done. The needs are going to be done. As our former elder used to say, we can shout right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I'm here to greet our first-time visitors. Do we have any first-time visitors in our midst today? Stand up, please. Thank God. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Do we have any second-time visitors today? Second time coming for the second time? Second time he came in this church? How about any third time visitors here? Any third time? Uh, third time, hey, praise God. You must third time visitors, thank God, thank God. Uh, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Luther Blackwell and our entire San Francisco family, one, thank you for uh, coming and visit San Fran and come back as your oldest convenient. Uh, I have a couple of announcements. San Francisco Temple, Christian Assembly Evangelist Department present Women of the Bible series every Wednesday starting in the month of December 2023 through the month of May 2024. Come out and bring a friend or a family member. It's located in the Marie McDaniel Fellowship Hall right back there. And you can go, they tell you how to get in there. And it's uh I say every Wednesday, start at 6 o'clock. The church number is 314-388-3300, extension 1. If you need, some, need someone to contact, uh, Minister, Chief Minister Dorothy Savage, she sits over there. Yeah, you know her. She, she, got a, she got a voice. Thank God for that voice. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Uh, then I have another, uh, another announcement for the Sunday School Department. On next Sunday, we're going to have a movie. Now, anybody here been, been harassed? You ever been harassed on your job? Somebody just harassed you uh, or bullied you, you know? And that's what happened in this movie. This one guy was harassing and bullying this guy. And how, and that's how God, God does that. You know, he brings somebody, harass you, to bully you, to make you start praying. And so... This guy started harassing and bullying this particular guy. And, but you know, you just don't wake up in the morning, you know, I'm gonna become a bully. I, I'm gonna become a harass people, you know. Something happened in that person's life to bring them to that point in their life. And we're gonna see in next Sunday, nine o'clock in Sunday school, see what ha how that young man got to that point and how God sent someone to help him. I, I expect to see you next Sunday at nine o'clock in Sunday school. God bless you. Come on, this is a good thing to praise the Lord. Come on, this is a good day to praise the Lord. Would everyone please stand in his presence? Please stand. Give God your best praise. Come on and give him your best praise. Hallelujah. You are the ultimate sacrifice. You are the blood was born. Hallelujah. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of your praise. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 
He inhabit the praises of his people. Hallelujah. You are that temple. You are that people. Hallelujah. We magnify his name. We glorify him. He's worthy to be praised. We come for one other reason, but to lift up the name of Jesus. We come with no other motive, but to lift up the name of Jesus. Come on and give up your best praise. Stay up here. Let him inhabit the praises. Hallelujah. He's in the house to do. He's here to do. Hallelujah. We lift up your holy name. You worthy, Father. You worthy, God. You worthy. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Where the brethren and the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty in this house. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Praise the name. I refuse to let the rock praise him. I will give him the glory. I will give him the honor. I will give him the praise. We exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. Good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good God. Glory to God. The spirit of the Lord is in this place. We only have one manner, just one thing in mind, but to come into the house of the Lord and give him the praise that's due to his name. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He watched over you all week long. He made provision for you on your job that you be able to do what you're entitled to do. Hallelujah. I thank God for his word. I thank God for what he's doing in our lives. He's no respect to the person. What he do for me, he'll do for you. But you got to give him his ultimate praise. That's what you were designed for. That's what you was created for. You wasn't created just to see yourself. You were created to give him the glory. Hallelujah. He inhabits the praise of Israel. Glory. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Glory to God. Hey, hey. Glory to the Lord. See that I don't go by side. Hallelujah to the Lord. See. Glory. Glory. Hey, hey, hey. Good God. Oh, God. Good God. Good God. Good God. Good God. I dare you. I dare you for one second. Just one second to give him your best praise again. Give him the glory. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Give him the praise. Glory. Glory. Good God. Glory. Hey, 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 hey. Glory, glory. Hey. Good God. around me I'm gonna go on with the offering but I could have spent my life without a life I could have been taken out of here but it's grace is sufficient I was in an incident of an accident but God kept the angels around me my sign angel our ministry angels I could have been gone I was traveling down highway 40 and there was a six accident collision going back and forth. 
And I say, Lord, give me to avoid it. But just one second, all it took was one second. This lady slammed on the brake. There I carotted into her. And it was his grace that protected me. For that alone, I give him the glory. That he watched over you all night long. He protected you all day long. That alone, he's worthy. Good God. Lord, while we do our anthem, send prosperity now. Sound like you mean it? Send prosperity now. It's offering time. Lord, we want to have a cheerful heart in this atmosphere because you about to do something in this place through Evolution Blackwell. And we know there's a rainbow word that's coming. Y'all prepare your table, prepare your heart that this word will totify you and sanctify you and cultivate you. Now, Lord, I want everybody to lift up their hand and their offering to show God the first fruit of your increase. He said, given it shall be given, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto thy bosom. Now, Father, we hold the first fruit of our increase before you, and we bring our offering before you, the ultimate offering of sacrifice. Now, Father, we pray that you bless some, some 30, some 40, some 50, some 100 fold, and these they are all the blessing we ask in your holy name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, receive your offering after the ushers direct you to come down the aisle. Come on and keep praising him. Somebody clap your hands. Come on, somebody clap your hands. If God has been good to you, you ought to be able to stand up on your feet. You ought to be able to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. Hallelujah. 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 
and because he's been so good, God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the honor. God, we give you all the praise. God, we give you all the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, everybody, stand up to your feet. We're going to sing a good song that everybody can sing with us. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands. It's to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, everybody sing every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, if you know the second verse, just sing, sing, ha sing hallelujah to our glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, from the top, every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. It's to our God. Hey, sing hallelujah to our God. Come on, glory, hallelujah. Oh, every praise, every praise to our God. Oh, every praise is to our God. Everywhere with one accord. Come on. God, my 
is to our God. Come on, sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hey, yes you are. You are God, my deliverer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. 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 Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. Yes, Lord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise you say. Every praise, every praise all over the room. Every praise. Every praise, come on, he deserves it all. Every praise, every praise, my worship is for real. Every praise, every praise, every praise, it's to, it's to our God. Come on, we declare and decree that every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. You've been so good, Jesus. You've been so kind, Lord. You're an awesome God. Come on, you're an awesome God. You're a mighty God. And we love you, God. We love you with our whole heart. Jesus, we love you more than anything, God. For you've done so much for us. God, we'll praise your name. We'll bless your name, Jesus. We'll bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, think about what he's done for you just over these past couple of days. We're in the season of giving thanks. We're giving thanks to our God, the one that woke us up this morning. Hallelujah. The one that gave us the activities of our limbs. The one that us in our right minds. God, his grace is so sufficient. Come on, we love you, Jesus. Yes, we do. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I lift my hands in total admiration unto you. You reign on the throne for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can see song I just want to say that I love you more than anything come on if you know it just I live I lift my hands and soul adoration unto you declare that you reign you reign on the throne for you are God for you are God and God Yes, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Yes, God. I worship and adore you. Yeah. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come 
all, can it be our declaration? I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Come on, I worship back. I worship back. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes, I do, you. Jesus. More than To Calvary, to save a wretch like you and me, that's love. Come on, declare it with me. That's love, yeah, yeah. That's love. Come on, one more time. Jesus went to Calvary. Jesus went, come on, to Calvary. To save a little old wretch like, like you and me. that that was love that died upon the cross for you and me it was his ultimate love yes Lord hey that's love yes Lord that's love yes Lord declare a decree that's love let your heart sing to our Savior that's love Everybody sing, that's love, that's love. Come on, you can declare it in Greek.
that's love I lift my hands in total adoration to you you reign on the throne yes Lord for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone my cloudy days are gone my cloudy days are gone and I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything yes Lord hallelujah come on bless the name of the Lord for he's done so much you've done so much for us Jesus you're an awesome God you're an awesome God yeah you're an awesome God you're an awesome God yeah you're an awesome God you're an awesome God you're an awesome God how many know that's love he went to Calvary Hallelujah. Would everyone please stand? You're able to stand in the house of the Lord. We thank God for that. About to present a man of God who I've known throughout some years. I remember him and his sister come up here. Alana used to come and direct the youth and have every August come in and preach the youth. And he came down and ministered when his grandfather asked him to come and preach the word of God. And so far we transitioned, even when Elder Bishop Luther James Blackwell took over where God placed him over this house. And we used to go down to conference when we had to travel from St. Louis to Mega Church. And then I met Elder Lucian Blackwell where he carried the word of God and it's his ability in a prophetic movement that God got on his life. And I've seen that and noticed that, that he had his own identity and he spoke that by being transparent. And I've seen the man of God work in demonstration of the Holy Ghost. And not only that, as he used the Old Testament and the New Testament, how he breaks down the word of God. And Matthew 4 and 4 said, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God that God used through him and I can say that he heard the written voice that's in the word. The written voice that sometimes we miss according to scripture. And I'm infallible and believe without any shadow of a doubt that he hears the inner voice through divine revelation. I'm introducing to some even by live stream and those that he's no stranger in this house. I would like us to lift our hand before the Lord and give him the greatest praise and receive our own uh, elder, Lucian Blackwell. Come on and give the Lord a hand praise for him. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah again. Hallelujah. There's a sweet presence. Keep on playing that chord. Just play that chord. There's a sweet presence in the place this morning. While we were singing, I thought about it. And the Lord showed me the verse in Isaiah 61. And I'm paraphrasing, but... That's the verse that talks about he'll give you beauty for ashes. And he'll essentially trade you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. What I love about worship is not because it's a time filler. When you think about changing clothes... If somebody spilled something on you 
and you're in one condition and you know that you don't want to be wet, you don't want to be have that spot or that stain on you, what we normally do is we go in the back room and we change our clothes. Because changing clothes helps us to feel better. And when you think about the garment of praise, I wholeheartedly believe that the Holy Spirit, even though the Bible was written by men, it's Holy Spirit inspired. And I fully believe that the Holy Spirit inspired the Word of God to be written the way it is for a reason. Because when you think about a garment, it's something that you put on. All of us right now are wearing clothing because it covers us. And a garment of praise is another such covering. Praise covers you. And God says, I will exchange you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. We all know that we're in the Thanksgiving season or we're just coming out of the Thanksgiving season. And the Bible doesn't just dictate that we do certain things just for any reason. There's a reason behind everything that God has us do. And so many times there's verses about giving thanks, giving praise. And a lot of times I ask myself, why, why, why? And the reason is because there is a counteract to the enemy's devices. Everything that happens in the spirit of God, in the kingdom of God, is designed to counteract or be a counter defense to what the enemy's trying to do. We all know that the enemy's always trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And, and we, he's oftentimes trying to kill us by taking away our joy. And God said, if you have the spirit of heaviness, the anecdote to that, the solution to that, it's just praise. What's interesting is that psychologists, scientists have found a link between depression and an ungrateful heart. It's no wonder God says in his word that I'll trade you the garment of praise. I'll put on you a covering. If you praise me, praise can cover you from the spirit of heaviness. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to necessarily spend thousands of dollars on a psychiatrist or a therapist. There's nothing wrong with it. Some of us have serious things that need to be discussed. Mental health is real. There's nothing wrong with that. But in the kingdom of God, God says, I have an easy solution. All you have to do to get rid of that spirit of heaviness is to praise me. Because when you start praising me, you are lifting out that spirit. You are changing your clothes and you're taking off that spirit and you're putting on another garment. That's why we praise. That's why we worship. A lot of times we come in here and the worship leaders try to pump and prod us. And sometimes we get into a form of worship. But I'm here to tell you that if you just try it, tell somebody, just try it. Don't take my word for it. Take the word for it. Don't take mine. Take his word. If you just try it, I guarantee you, Things will change. That's why the Bible says when, when praises go up, there's certain laws that exist in the heavenly places that have nothing to do with whether you believe it or not. It's like gravity. Whether I believe in gravity or not, if I throw my phone up, it's going to come down, whether I believe it or not. There's certain laws that are at work whether you believe it or not. Praise is one of those laws. Worship is one of those laws. If your praise goes up, God said, I have to. It's in my DNA. It's in my nature that if you praise me, 
I have to bless you. If you worship me, I have to deliver you. If you call upon my name, I have to save you. I have no other choice. It's in my DNA. If you're dealing with any heaviness this morning, if you're dealing with any depression, if you're dealing with any anxiety, God says, praise me. That's going to be your covering. You don't have to do it because I said do it. I'm happy. I got joy. I'm not trying to take anything from you. I'm trying to get something to you. So if you dare to try it, if you dare to try it, I want everybody that can to extend their hands. Don't worry about what's going on in 30, 40 minutes. Don't worry about who's here, who's not here. Don't worry about the game that's on TV later, the concert that you have to go to. Don't worry about anything else. I just want you to worship and watch God change the atmosphere. Watch God move on your behalf. Just worship me. Just worship me. Come on, open up your mouth. Turn me up, turn me up, turn me up. Come on, just open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Hallelujah. We bless your wonderful name, God. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Whatever you need, it's in your praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, get what you need. Hallelujah. We exalt your wonderful name. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. He talababo korea tarababo kosia. Yana na korea tarababo koshi tere bebekeya. Ya talababo kosia tarababa kara tarababo koya tarababekeshi. He's here. Hatalababo kosia. We thank you. We thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thank you. He's here. He's in the room. You invited him. He's here now. We thank you. Somebody just lift your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Come down from me just a little bit. The Lord put on my spirit. He said, praise me now for the two generations behind you. Hey. The Holy Spirit just said, praise me because there's two generations that are connected to your praise. There's two generations. There's son and daughter. There's grandson. There's granddaughter. That's, that, that God said, I want to do something through families, but it's going to be dependent upon your worship. Yeah, talababokosia, talababokosia. We thank you, Father God. 
Ya talaba boko si talaba keshe ya talaba kaya. Rotora babe ya kesi ya talaba boko shi. I feel God right now. There's three young men. I'm not going to call you out. I could, but I'm not going to do it. But there's three young men. God is dealing with you right now. Your heart is starting to beat really fast. And God said, the reason it's beating really fast is that's an indication that I'm calling you. You've been questioning whether I'm real. And God said, I'm manifesting in the physical realm. And I'm trying to show you that I'm real right now. Your heart is beating fast because I've called you. And if you respond to the call, I'm going to change your life forever, forever, forever. You don't have to now, but if you just dare to come up and give your life to Christ right now, watch what God does for you. You don't have to. I'm not putting you on the spot, but I do know that there's three young men here. There's three young, I could feel it. Yeah. <sighs> I always have a, I have a joke with my wife that anytime I feel something or God, that God puts something on me, I always say, I can see today. I can see today. Elder Domingo, I can see today. There's three of you, but it's okay. God said, if you respond to me, watch what I do with your life. Turn with me to Genesis. It's good to see you all. I want to thank God for Bishop in his absence, the ruling elder, Harris, and Harris, and all the elders, ministers, deacons, everyone in their respectful places. God bless you. Thank God for my lovely wife who has traveled with me yet again, Sister Evangelist Naila. Thank God for all of you. Just look at somebody and say, Elder Blackwell, thanks God for you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. God bless all the musicians. Y'all keep the spirit moving, and I thank God for you. I hate it when I have something to say, and then God reroutes me. We thank you. Uh, somebody just lift your hands one more time. Just thank them. Elder Dove, you better not yell too hard. You might get healed. Elder Dove, Elder Dove, listen, I, I don't know if you've been to the doctor, if you're going to the doctor, but next time you go to the doctor, they're going to say something about an L2 disc. I hear in the spirit them saying something about an L2, L1, L1, L2 disc that's out of place. They're going to know where to go. I, I hear L2. I don't know what that means. I'm not a doctor. But I hear L2. And God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to heal you even before you get there. You're in a season of healing. I hear the voice of the Lord said, this is a season of healing. And if you dare to believe me, watch the miraculous happen. Yes, 
I've never heard this before, but, but youth, <laughs> no, I hear the Lord saying years are being removed from people's bodies. Years, meaning if your body feels like it's 60, you're going to feel like you're 40. I hear years being removed off of people's ligaments, their muscles. Tell somebody, dare to believe it. Somebody has arthritis in their hands, their hands like this, and I see it doing just like this. And you haven't been able to do this without pain. But God said, if you just step in, I'm removing arthritis and knuckles and joints and pains. Hallelujah. Ruling Elder Harris, God said in this season, play, pray for extreme healing amongst God's people. Miraculous healing. God is going to take you to a God is going to take you to another level of intimacy with Him. Sometimes we play with people and we say, Well, I want to pray with you because I know that God hears you. And we play with that sometimes. But God said, there's a level of intimacy that he's reserving just for you that you're going to be able to get prayers through that nobody else will be able to get, get him through. But God's going to listen to you because of your heart. So God said, pray for miraculous healing. 2024 is going to be stupid in this house for miraculous healing. I feel it. I just, I just feel it. I don't know why. I just feel it. Turn with me to Genesis 12. Turn with me to Genesis 12. I'm going to read verse 1 through 5. Uh. I'm going to read from the contemporary English version so you can follow along with me. The Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your family, and your relatives and go to the land that I will show you. I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. You will become famous and be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you, but I will put a curse on anyone who puts a curse on you. Everyone on earth will be blessed because of you. Abram was 75 years old when the Lord told him to leave the city of Haran. He obeyed and left with his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all the possessions and slaves they had acquired while in Haran. Place your hands on the reading of the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these few moments of time that we're gathered together to eat from your table. I pray that you'll bless me as the man of God for this hour, that you'll anoint me to speak thy word and thy word only. Help me not to add anything to it or take any way, but help take anything away, but help me to give your people the unadulterated word of God. That those who are here might hear what you have to say to us. Touch our minds that we might understand your word. Give us knowledge, wisdom, that we might apply it, the heart to receive it, so that we can grow mature in you. And expand your kingdom. Ultimately, that your name may be lifted up in our lives. We thank you. 
this morning for all that you have done, are doing, and will do. We honor you. We give you glory, praise, and honor for your do-it-all. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's people said, thank God. Amen. Amen. You might be seated. I want, and I might not be able to finish this all today, but unfortunately or fortunately for you, depending on how you view it, I'm here with you next Sunday as well. So I might have to cross over and finish the rest of this next Sunday. But this is a simple word, but it's a word that God has been dealing with me about as it relates to the kingdom of God. And and so I want to If you're scoring at home, I want to title this message, When God Calls. Tell somebody next to you, When God Calls. So I want to explore a profound and and timeless truth, which we know it as the calling of God. Most individuals, as it relates to the spiritual aspect of their life are always trying to understand the calling of God or what it means to be called by God. We're always in search of God's call. We're always, the calling of God can sometimes be very ambiguous. We're always thinking, if we hear something, was that God or was that me? Did I truly hear God's voice or was that simply the turkey I ate at 1130 last night? How do I know when God is speaking to me, how do I know when I'm following what he wants versus what I want? How do I know God's voice? And so I want to take a little bit of time and explore this a little bit. Because understanding the impact of God's call will enable us as Christians to really better decipher what's me and my will versus he and his will. So I want to take this from Abram. In Genesis 12, which we all know is a very familiar passage of Scripture, and there's certain pertinent points in there that I want to pull out that helps us understand what it means to be called by God. And not what it means when he's calling, but what does it mean after he calls? We have no problem when God calls. We have a problem with the after. We have a problem knowing what to do after. And so looking at Genesis in our text, the Bible says the Lord said to Abram. Now, before we embark upon anything, we always have to recognize that it's the Lord that's saying something. Oftentimes, we're so quick to move based on a gut feeling or based on what mama said or what daddy said, based on what the elders told us. And very rarely is anybody able to say, the Lord told me. I get real, real sheepish when somebody says, God told me, because that's heavy weight. I can give you all the advice in the world, but the moment somebody says, God said, I don't touch it anymore. You and I have to be convinced in whatever we do, whatever endeavor we're doing in our lives, in the ministry for him, we have to be convinced that the Lord is calling. And so the Lord called to Abram, and he told him, he gave him a command. He said, leave your country, 
your family, your relatives, and go to the land that I will show you. Leave your, con- leave your country. Now, Abram's country was very familiar to him. That's where he lived. That's where he resided. His family was there. All his friends were there. His occupation, whatever he did. He was very familiar with his space. And God, who had something infinitely better for him, called him. And his first command was, leave your family, leave your relatives, leave everything that you know, leave it behind, and go somewhere. Now, he didn't name the place. He just said, go somewhere that I'm going to show you. God's calling will always remove you from the comfortable. I have, I want to kill your theology this morning. Somewhere along the lines, people got the idea that in Christ, once we connected to Christ, once we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior, that we were supposed to live a life of comfort. Let me help you understand God's kingdom. God's kingdom, in God's kingdom, he has designed for you to have peace, but not comfort. There's a difference, and we try to conflate the two. We say, well, if God wants us to have peace, he wants me to be comfortable. No, God wants you to be at peace, and peace is from within, and it's based on a relationship with him. In other words, he wants you to rest in him. Comfort means that you don't have to do anything. Walk with me, because I'm not trying to hype you up. I want you to hear what God is saying for you. So God told Abram, I want you to leave your country. I want you to be, I need you to be uncomfortable. In the kingdom of God, if you are not willing to be uncomfortable, you will never be an asset that God uses for his kingdom. Discomfort is God's design. Your biggest growth is going to come in times of discomfort. It is human nature to want to be comfortable. Everybody went through the Thanksgiving holiday. After you eat, sometimes you want to relax, sit on the couch, just watch TV. And how many know that there's always this certain part, this certain position that you get in, whether it's in the couch, on the couch, or in your bed, that you just don't, don't, don't move me from here. I get mad. There's a little, I have a little, I have a little, I guess it's a U couch in my living room. And there's this little nook that both me and my wife lay in. It's a nook. Oh, Elder Harris, that's the most comfortable spot. I believe Jesus invented that spot. It's so comfortable. And I'll sit in that nook, but then the TV won't be as loud as I want it to be. And the remote is not, it's never where you want it to be. And so it's it's a life decision Either I'm going to let the TV remain at this volume or I got to remove myself from this comfort to get the remote. And a lot of times I'll just keep the volume where it is because I'm not moving from this spot. But here's the thing about comfort. Comfort feels good to a certain point. (laughs) Because even when you're laying in bed in that position, on your left side, on your right side, that one where you just don't want to move yourself from and it feels so good to rest and relax and you're just comfortable. What happens if you stay in that position too long? You're going to get up and then you're going to realize that you were using muscles that you never even knew that you had. Because comfort is designed for a season. Comfort only works for a certain amount of time because too much comfort becomes discomfort. 
Let me move on. So he told Abram, he said, I'm, I'm moving you out. I'm moving you out. I'm moving you out. And I want you to go to a place that I'm going to show you. Now, he never told Abram the place. Stop looking for God to give you all the details when he tells you to move somewhere. He's not. Why is he never going to relinquish all the details? Because as long as you know about what's going on, you don't have to lean on him. And, Bible, and the Bible says in Hebrews, without faith, what, what does your Bible say? Okay. I have some people that read the Bible here. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So God is always going to design your life for you to employ faith. He's always going to set your life up so that you can use faith if you're trying to be used or be, be, uh, operate in the kingdom of God. He's never going to put you in a situation in his kingdom for you not to use what works in his kingdom. As long as you can see that step, as long as I know that I'm walking down this step, I don't have to lean on anything but the moment someone tells me to close my eyes and walk oh Jesus I'm going to remember that there's this guardrail here and so I'm going to touch the guardrail and I'm going to feel my way and God said baby I, that's how I designed your life I want you to lean on your guardrail I need you to lean on me so I'm never going to put you in a position for you to see because as long as you could see feel touch your way through you're using your senses and your senses is fleshly my senses are spiritual so I always need you to tap into the spirit I always need you to lean on me that's why the Bible says without faith it's impossible you can't please God as long as you are using your own senses let me help you a surefire sign that God has called you to anything is that you don't have any of the details all you know is you've heard a voice that's all you know. And that's the way God has, God has designed it. Tell somebody without faith. The Bible also says that faith comes by what? Hearing and that by what? Let me stop you there. Stop telling me that you have faith, but your faith was birthed from your own voice. Stop saying that something is God and I'm just using faith. You can't use faith on flesh. Those are from two different kingdoms. Faith is spiritual. So in order for faith to be used, it has to derive from something that is spiritual. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing, and you can only hear by the word of God. Anything else that you've heard and you're acting on, it can only be faith when it comes from God. That's why you have to know that you heard. Stop moving out on your emotion. You know what? I'm so sick of Bishop. He done said something to me one last time. I'm leaving. Did God tell you? The worst thing that you can do is make a move when God's not in it. Because as long as God's in it, he's, he has to protect you. That's what happens. We talked about a couple weeks ago. When God placed Adam in the garden, he gave him protection through a boundary. When God does it, he has to protect you. When you do it, you on your own. So I don't care how ugly it is. If you don't hear God's voice in it, Stay put. Tell somebody, stay put. Stay put. Faith requires leaning on him versus leaning on your own understanding. But he also talks um, in verse 5, he says, I will bless you, or excuse me, verse 2, I will bless you and make your descendants into a great nation. God told Abram, I will bless you. 
He didn't have to ask for it. He didn't have to promise it. He didn't have to uh, uh, tarry for it. God just said it. When God calls you, your calling is already attached to a promise from God. I need you to understand, and I need you to get it in your head, that God's desire is to bless you. Period. At the end of the day, no matter what God tells you to do, no matter what he calls you to do, no matter what he asks you to do, behind it, there's blessing. God's call always comes with two things. It comes with protection, and it comes with promise, and it, com it comes with protection, and it comes with promise. They're both attached to God's call. When he looked at Abram, he said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you into a great nation. Stop questioning whether God wants to bless you. It's already in his DNA. Abram didn't have to pray for the blessing. God just said it. Abraham didn't ask God to re remove him from the country. God called him and said, hey, Abram, leave your family, leave your kinfolk, go to a place that I'm going to show you, and I will bless you. God's promise was already there for blessing. God's promise is already for blessing in your life. That's a promise. That's something that he wants. Stop walking around with low self-esteem thinking, well, I wonder if God wants to bless me. Baby, he does. Tell somebody, shut up. He wants to bless you. He wants to. It's in his nature to do so. It's in his DNA to do so. He wants to. He said, Abram, I will bless you and I will make you a great nation. I will make you into a great nation. Now, the promise is always attached to God's call. Here's where we slip up. Because even though there's a promise attached to God's calling, and we know that there's provision attached to God's calling, the one thing that's also attached to God's calling is process. When Jesus was walking by, he called James and John. He said, hey, put down your nets. Come follow me. Stop what you're doing. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. They were already fishing, but he said, I, now I will make you fishers of men. But he used the verb make. The word make or to become, it signifies a process. Most people love the promise of God. Most people love the blessing of God. But what they don't want is the process. But you have to understand a process is designed and attached to a promise. You will never get the promise without the process. You'll never get it. And that's what we try to shirk. We always try to shirk the process. We always, we, everybody this Thursday wanted a great Thanksgiving dinner. But it's like kids, uh, is it time to eat yet? Lazy husbands. Girl, you said that was going to be ready at 3 o'clock. Well, why is this 4.30? Why didn't you, why didn't you have that done yet? We want the end result, but we want to move past the process. Why? Because what, what happens in the process? Oh, oh, that's a whole nother message. You know, I'm going to talk about that next week. What happens in the process? What happens in the process? What happens in the process? Be in the process, we're made. In the process, we're broken down. Everybody likes the gold jewelry, Corey. Everybody wants the jewelry, but they don't understand what happened to that, to that gold to make it shine. It had, to, it had to go through the heat. It had to have pressure put on it. See, everybody likes the shine, but they don't like the heat. You love that somebody came and prophesied to you that you're going to be a pastor. Oh, yes, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm called to be a pastor. What they don't realize, Elder Domingo, is in order to be a pastor or to be a preacher, you have to have something to say. And generally, you won't have something to say unless you've been processed. I can't sit up here and preach to you if I ain't been through nothing. Because my testimony only becomes because I had a test first. 
We like the testimony, but everybody forgets that there's a test to get there. You like the fact that you've been healed, but the fact that you've been healed is because you were sick first. You like the fact that you were delivered, but the only way that you were delivered was because you were bound first. You can't have the victory without going through the battle. I know I haven't, quote unquote, arrived. But people say, Elder Lucian, how do you get some of the things that you get? Because I went through some of the things I went through. Stop, <laughs> listen, I don't know why I'm saying this. Stop being jealous of other people's anointing. Stop being jealous of other people's anointing because you don't know what it cost them to get that anointing. Baby, this is going to cost you something. Turn to somebody and say, this is going to cost you something. The higher you go, the more enemies that you're going to face. The more people going to talk about you. The more people going to lie on you. The more people going to dog you. If you want the anointing, you have, to be, you have to be able to deal with the breaking. Everybody looks at a Bishop Jakes or looks at a Bishop Luther Blackwell and says, oh, I want that. But you don't know what they had to go through. You don't know the demons and the demonic forces that they had to face. You don't know the fire that they had to come through in order to get that. Pastor Lois, you all know, she was very anointed, could see, could see. But God had to afflict her in order for her to be in a position to have that kind of anointing. We want what God has for us, but we want to skirt, we want to go around the process. And if you are called of God, understand this. Yes, be happy for the promise. Yes, Rejoice over the promise. Yes, rejoice over the blessing. Yes, rejoice over the prophecy. But understand that attached to every word is a trial. Because ruling Elder Harris, my Bible says that the word has to be tried. Do you not know that every word that God speaks in your life, there's a trial that's attached to it? Certainly I can move in the prophetic, but I don't like it when it's done to me. I don't like it when it's done to me. Oh, Elder Lucia, you're not spiritual. I am spiritual. That's why I don't like it. Because I understand what it means. I understand how God works in this way. That every time a word is released, before it comes forth, it has to be tried. Before it comes forth, it has to be tested. Before it comes forth, it has to be broken. Before the word comes forth, it has to die. That's why Jesus said, Jesus came, he was the word. But in order for him to have full power, he had to die, be, then rise again for the word to take effect. You're the same way. If word is in you, baby, something or someone's going to have to die in order for what's in you to take effect and have power. The promise is great. We can rejoice over that. But God is looking for people who can endure the process. He's looking for people that can endure the process. And I'm not going to get through all this. But let me, let me just. Uh, let me just hit a couple, a couple of points that I want to show you. Abram. The Bible says, after God told him to leave the country, the Bible says Abram was 75 years old when God spoke to him. I just want to say something to those who can hear this in the spirit realm. Don't confine 
the calling of God in your life to your age on this earth. You see age. You feel age. You sense it. God doesn't see it. God sees what I've made you to. God had, do you, do you realize that Abram at 75 years old, it wasn't until 75 years old, Tim, that God said, you're ready for the word. You're ready for my call at 75. Deacon Cooper, Deacon Cooper, how old are you, sir? You're 70? He's 75? Oh. You're just now ready for what God's designed to do in your life. I know, just I know, just from what I see, I know that this is a mature church. But tell somebody next to you, God's just starting with us. <laughs> oh, I know you might not believe it, but if you, can, if you can see what I see by faith, God's just starting with this house. No, he's not through with you yet. Stop saying, well, I'm just going to church to bide my time. I ain't got nothing else to do. No, as long as you have breath in your body, there's a call that's attached to your name. I don't care what it is. There is something that is attached to you that God is saying, you know what, Sister Lois, now you're ready. You ain't been ready all this time, but now you're ready. Tell somebody, I'm just getting started. <laughs> I'm just getting started. Oh, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Yeah, I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. Tell somebody else, I'm just getting started. I don't care what they told, said about this house. I don't care what they said about you. Tell somebody, I'm just getting started. Minister Savage, you're just getting started. All the hollering and all the praying that you've been doing for years and years, you haven't even scratched the surface of what the true anointing God has called you for. Tell somebody, I'm just, I'm just getting started, baby. I'm just getting started. I don't, I want to stay right there. I need to speak life back into this house. I hear forces, I hear them, I hear them. I hear them saying this house is dead. But God said that's good. I want people to think that this house is dead because people also thought Jesus was dead. People also thought he was dead. But the one thing, good thing about our savior was that three days, baby, tell somebody three days. Three days, they went to see if he was stinking. See, there's some folk that are looking to see if you're stinking. They know that you're dead. They want to see if you're stinking because a lot of people just can't, don't, they just want to talk about somebody when they're dead and they're gone and they're hurting. But, but guess what's going to happen? They're going to think this house is dead. And then they're going to realize that three days later when they go to look at the tomb, there's no body there. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach. I'm trying to preach. But I'm speaking life in this house. And all I hear God saying is, we're just getting started. Tell three people, we're just getting started. <laughs> we're just getting started. I don't care what it looks like. Yeah, you might have blood coming out your side. You might have scars on your hands. You might be wrapped in garments that signify that you're dead. But tell somebody, I'm just getting started. I don't care what people said about you. I don't care what the community says about this house. I know what God said. And God says, all I have to do is touch you. All I have to do is snap my finger. And what looks dead is going to come to life. That's what happened with Lazarus. 
Lazarus was dead. Was dead. And Jesus looked at it and called it something else. He said, that brother ain't dead. He's asleep. <laughs> you have to be very careful about listening to how people name your condition. You have to be very careful about listening to when people say something about you. Because when a lot of people say the same thing, your flesh tends to want to believe it. Your flesh wants to believe it because all you hear is all you hear. But you need to listen to that inner man, that inner voice. See, everybody looked at Lazarus and said he's dead. Jesus said, if you knew me, you'd realize he's not dead. If you knew me, you'd realize that he's just sleep. Clearly, you don't know who's in your presence. Clearly, you don't realize that I am Jehovah Jireh. Clearly, you don't realize that I'm the king of kings. I'm the Lord of lords. And if I can do anything, Anything, there's nothing too hard for me and so if I could see him he's not dead he's sleeping Jesus looked at Lazarus and said he could not be dead the reason he could not be dead is because God knew that he wasn't done with him and the only reason that death can be called death is when something is complete. So if a purpose in something is not complete, it can't be dead. It may be dormant, but it can't be dead. People are looking all over saying, this house is dead. But I'm telling you, Jesus just walked by and he looked at you and said, they ain't dead. They're asleep because in three days they're going to raise up and they're going to raise up with all power, not just a little bit of power, not just some of the power. They're going to raise up with all power. Somebody say all power. Stand up if you believe it. Stand up and give him some praise. When God's word is on a people, when God's word is on something, that something is going to go through a transformation, a transfiguration, a metamorphosis where it looks like it's going to die. It looks like it's dead. It looks like it can't be used. It has to go through that because as long as it survives the trial, the flesh can say, I got through it. But God is never going to allow flesh to glory over him. That's why God never steps into a situation until you step out of it. Because he's never going to leave you any room to say, you did it. So God's going to let stuff in your life stink. He's going to let it smell. He's going to let it rot. He's going to let you look at it and say, there's, there, there, there's nothing else I can do. And as soon as you throw your hands up and say, there's nothing else I can do, God said, gotcha. That's exactly where I want you, baby. Because the minute that your power ends, my power begins. When God raises this house again. Hear me clearly. You can write this down. You can quote it. When God raises this house again, no man or woman's going to be able to say it was I. We're all just going to come in this house praising God because we're going to know that it was him by his grace, by his mercy, by his strength. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. What's the truth? The truth is, Lord, I can't. You can. That's why I worship you. The truth is, you're omnipotent. I'm not. That's why I praise you.
there's a promise that God has made. And let me say this, and I close. The promise that God made to Abram was to Abram, but it was four generations to come. Stop limiting God's word over your life to your lifetime. There's some people that are discouraged because they're saying, Lord, you told me something 20 years ago and it still hasn't happened. David wanted to build the kingdom. David, that was his desire was to build the kingdom. But God wouldn't let him touch it. His desire manifested through his son. There are certain words that God gives to you that aren't for you. They're for the generations after you. There are certain words that may come to you that you will never see in your lifetime. It doesn't mean God's a liar. It meant that he was looking through you when he gave you that word. He might have been speaking to you, but he was speaking to you, Domingo, but he was really speaking to your children. Then he was speaking to your grandchildren, and he was speaking to your great-grandchildren. Because God's blessings are generational. God's promises are generational. Mm, My God. Lift your hands. Mm. Abraham had to give up everything. He had to give up everything in order to get what God eventually had for him. If you are operating in the kingdom, I'm not talking about man's kingdom. If you're operating in the kingdom of God, and I wanna, we're going to talk about that at some point, the kingdom of God, what is it? Because we talk about it, we hear it said all the time, but I don't really understand, I don't really think that we as Christians have a full grasp of what the kingdom of God really is. And we're going to talk about it. But in the kingdom of God, you're going to have to lose to gain. <laughs> you're going to have to suffer loss to gain. Now, the Bible to- God told Abram, leave your kinfolk, leave your relatives, leave everything behind. What we don't hear preached about, and maybe we do, Abram obeyed God, but he didn't obey him 100%. What do you mean? Because the word was clear. Leave your family, leave your kinfolk, leave everything behind and go to a place that I'm going to show you. And in the next verse, the Bible said Abram took his, took his family, he took his nephew, and all their possessions. So he obeyed, but he didn't quite obey. And maybe at some point we'll talk about that. That's a whole different message. Because God was challenging him with loss. And because Abram tried to stay connected to what God told him to get rid of, there were some things that Abram had to suffer that he wouldn't have had to suffer had he just let the stuff go. You're going to have to suffer loss for the kingdom. But God said what you're gaining compared to what you're losing is greater than you could have ever thought. Lift your hands. I want to give somebody the opportunity right now. I would be remiss if I did not give you the opportunity to get your life right before Christ. What does that mean? It does not mean coming to church necessarily. What it means is that you recognize that you want to enter into a relationship and give your life to someone else. And you want Jesus to be in control of your life instead of you being in control of your life.
Because like I said, when you connect with Jesus, there's safety. There's protection in his kingdom. You don't have that when you do things on your own. You just don't have it. And I want to give someone an opportunity. If you're here and you know that you're not saved or you have been saved and you feel like you've gone on that salvation and you want to reaffirm your relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm giving you 30 seconds. Just come. Don't worry about who's here, who's not, who's saying something, who's not. At the end of the day, when you go and meet Jesus, it's, you can't bring friends with you. Can't bring mama, daddy with you. Can't bring auntie. Can't bring grandma. This is you and him. Just lift your hands. Worship him. Open up your mouth all over the place and just... Express yourself to your Savior. Don't you want the name of Jesus? Litify this word in our hearts that and minds of your people whether they're dealing uh, we thank Elder Devin And I will take care of them. Don't fight it. Don't stress. God said, just give him over. We thank you, Lord. We glorify your wonderful name. Seal this word in our hearts and minds that we might not sin against you. Help us to feed on it throughout the course of this week. And we'll give your name glory. We'll give you honor. Mm, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Clap your hands for the word. Let's say amen for the word of God from my own Ed Lucian Blackwell. We could take the word that we heard from the men of God on today and we can apply it to our everyday life to have a good understanding when God is speaking to our spirit versus when self is speaking. Amen. Let's say amen and continue to pray and uplift him and his family, his lovely wife. Amen. Uh, is there any announcements that we have or anything? In particular, come on, Sister Ellis. Good afternoon, church. Uh, the education department is giving a oratorical contest event, and this is for the children 6th through 12th grade. Um, those who are interested in participating, there will be a first prize winner for junior high and also for high school. If you're a student, your child, your grandchild, your neighbor is interested, they need to email me and I have flyers if you want to come up and get one for me by December the 1st. And on December the 9th, we will have a workshop and orientation in the 
fellowship hall where the students can come and explore their speaking possibilities. After that, on uh, January 13th, we will have a virtual session for those who think they need additional coaching. And in February 10th is the actual oratorical competition. And the winners will be performing on the Black History Program, which will be held February 23rd. If you need a flyer, please see me. They're in the uh, old fellowship hall, but now that we have services over here, we're gonna move them here. But I have a few in my bag. So please give some young person the opportunity to speak better, where they can engage for college, they can engage for employment. Say amen with that said, I know, oh, Sister Tanika, come on. Hello and praise the Lord in the house of the Lord. Um, on this Thursday, we will start youth rehearsal again, 5.30 on Thursdays right here uh, over to the side and here in the sanctuary. So any youth or young adult that would like to participate in the youth activities and participating on fifth Sunday, uh, I would like to see you guys at 5.30 on Thursday and these Thursdays moving forward. Say amen with that. Okay. I think that all the announcements that we have, we will have Tuesday night prayer over in the Mother Marie McDaniels multipurpose center room. Amen. And then on next Sunday, Evolution will be back with us with part two of when you hear the voice of God. Let's say amen for that. Uh, with that said and done, can we all please stand as we get ready to take our final offering for this service and then have the benediction and at the conclusion of the prayer. And as you bring your offering, you will be dismissed. Amen. Uh, with every head bow, as the deacons come. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word that we heard on today, oh Father God. We thank you, oh Father God, that you spoke through Elder Lucian.